Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the LGL officially unofficial coverage of the LGL 2020 Summer Split Round 2, Match 2 of Playoffs. I'm your host, Alex Alderson, and it's by Master 1 on the air now. Of course, I'm joined by the generous, most caring, and also renowned duo that is Initialize and Nightmare, the Have Good Brother duo. You look confused that I'm complimenting you. I'll stop doing it and generous. I'll start insulting you. Uh, I, I am. I, 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 I'm have generous. You, I'm have caring. You, have I agree. Have you seen how many blue? All right, I take despicable, <laughs> disgusting, horrible, uncaring. Yeah. That, all right. All right. We'll go with that next time. Gentlemen, welcome to the cast. <laughs> Well, it's great to be here as always. Dude. <laughs> it definitely is. God, God, so excited to be here in casting. I think this should be a killer series. And that series is going to be Crest Gaming Act facing off against Detonation. Focus me, gentlemen. This split alone has really turned the tables on your, our expectations, really, on Destination Focus Me facing off against Crest Gaming Act. This was a team coming into this that was 1 in 10 internationally yeah. through how they just played them coming into this split they've turned that around they made it to one and one in summer coming into playoffs they were also the highest seed they're gonna have side selection there's a lot to unpack in this matchup especially when we compare how these teams got to where they are right now right mm. yeah i mean like yeah cga were inches away from claiming second place uncontested and then they had a fairly abysmal last week uh of the regular season uh, mm. There is a lot of talent on this squad, and we saw it kind of bite them more often than not in spring. But in summer, they seem to have found a little bit more consistency with their weighted coin flip, was the way we've been phrasing it. And we kind of saw first round of playoffs, and there's still a little bit of that coin flip in there. And maybe uh, it's kind of making CGA a little hard to read as to how good they are, because their variance is so damn high. All right, Nightmare, anything about that? Well, I think particularly in this matchup, I, the stats really don't help us either because we know that both these teams are really good on one particular side of the rift. Mm. They play very different kinds of champions. They play very different styles of play. Um, they are one on one in the regular split too. So everything kind of goes against each other and trying to just vie for that extra bit of advantage just on a numerical front. So that means we have to go... To our own narratives and what we think of each team and that doesn't particularly make it any easier either no i mean let's talk about chris gaming act first the highest seed out of the two which is peculiar to say the least especially when we're talking about detonation focus me mm -hmm. history chris gaming act one of their best seasons really in a while coming in at that almost second place spot and coming into the last week they almost seemed like a soft lock for that second place spot Playing out their minds, they had second place, and then week seven, disappointing, 0-2, actually falling to destination focus me. Mm -hmm. Then playoffs yeah. came along, they went 3-1, we all predicted 3-1, but not in the fashion or the style of the, how the games would actually play out, and let's dive a bit deeper into that one if you don't mind, gentlemen. Okay, um, CJ's early game is not good. No. It is blatantly one of their weakest parts of their games. Mm. However, if they survive enough to get through to a mid-game where they find these huge, just multi-dimensional team fights, they are pretty safe in most games. The Hawks did get early leads, and for the most part, it didn't end up netting them the win because CGA was still able to fight. Mm. Apart from the one game they gave a triple kill up to an Ezreal, he gets a Muramana at like 17 minutes, and the game just kind of ends because of that. Yeah. That, that is how That's... games of League of Legends work sometimes. Go on, initialize. Yeah, it's just, this is, this is the CGA problem, is that they have got some stellar laners, but they are often put into matchups that don't always get them advantage. Like, say, Arya likes to pick things like the Vladimir, where you're mm. going to just crush lanes sometimes, for example. Uh, and, and the bot lane as well just plays for pressure, and sometimes that bites them in the ass. Namely, giving over three kills to an Ezreal that <laughs> ends up at Muramana at 17 minutes. Hmm. Should we just ban Ezreal versus Destination Focus me? Maybe... Upon I, plays it I, I, well, I'm so joking a little cool, bit, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, actually, the more I'm joking about it, the more I'm thinking it actually is something you could do. Talking about Detonation Focus Me, coming into this playoffs, we're pretty disappointed with them. Let's be, let's be real, gentlemen. Worst split uh, in the organization's history. 
Uh, I, I like to take up, uh, you know, comic book guy from from The Simpsons. <laughs> Worst split ever. Um, DFM. <laughs> we've, we've for those of you who are tuning in for the first time to any of our content. Um, DFM are the overlords of the LGL. Yeah. They've won pretty much everything. And when they haven't won, the players which are currently on DFM have won instead. Ebby, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. This guy has been on pretty much all of the winning teams. Um, Detonation Focus Me this... are the only team to do back-to-back -back perfect splits in the world. That's how dominant it's... they are. Really yeah, emphasizing it's, it's... Nymera's point it... there. Yeah, it's, it, they, they are just... It, it, domestically they have been very very dominant however this split has just not been the case no. um they ended up going i believe it was seven and seven in the regular season with a tiebreaker to get them to eight and seven technically you got it but they before this they'd never had less than an 80 percent win record in the regular split now they have to have that blemish of a 50 50 split on their record however they did survive through their first round of playoffs and that's the important bit at least for them coming into this bit they're still alive but initialize that split uh that playoffs match wasn't anywhere near as pretty and i mean i was the only one if i must say so myself who predicted the five game outcome it was kind of how i thought it could have gone dfm also showed maybe some concern due to only victorious on that blue side which they won't have side selection for this time around yeah i, I agree um but a lot of that as well was throwing some monumental leads. Game two was probably a worthy loss against DFM, where but they were against Burning Core. Burning Core played out pretty well, and DFM kind of overused their globals a little bit. Kind of they are very used, inefficient. Yeah, exactly. Used four ultimates when maybe you could have got away with two to kill someone off, for example. And that's kind of a big deal when it's like a Carthus Requiem. Oh yeah. Game four, they were up seven k. Had put this Caitlyn in the dirt. This volley bear was rolling. Their Cogmore mid had two kills. It was all going up golden, and they overforced a number of engaged trying to uh, oh ex punish ex uh, over extensions and get punished in turn. Uh, and and. That was more my concern rather than side selection is that DFM's mid game still has these kind of um, blinders on. They kind of run for the the golden dream, don't want to let anything go and end up getting punished and tripped up over by the finish line, which is not great. Yeah, Burning Core did push them to the absolute limit and we did get to see the 5,000 per hour bear. Not Hedgehog, so it's not Sonic, thankfully, but Volleybear can go very fast with <laughs> Recall. And... Very fast. Sonic boom. Oh, it felt like he broke the sound barrier a fair few times, I would agree. So, we've got a team that's having their worst split ever and is on a redemption arc. We've got a team that's out to prove themselves that they should have been that second place team. Coming into our second round of playoffs, gentlemen. We already know who they will be facing in round three. They can't escape that. That fate is already sealed in stone. I don't know how you seal something in stone, uh, but it's sealed in stone. Um, how? Magic. Yeah, absolutely. Very big magic. How do you prepare for this if you're DFM facing off against Chris Gaming Act and vice versa? Because these are very difficult teams to prepare for. Part of the problem as well, remember, is that we're coming into a, a new patch to some extent, so mm. some of, as well as like how much has been hidden from you from scrims and stuff. And these are both squads that tend to prepare interesting champions, yeah. particularly in places like mid lane. Um, Seros is known for a slightly weird champion pool. Arya is just known for playing pretty much everything up to and including Callista mid. So there is a world no, where no, no, legit, yeah, legit. Rascal just is tough and face off. Go watch it. Really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is sometimes something of a, of a concern when it comes to preparing for these squads. You're often better off preparing for a play style uh, and knowing mm. kind of how does this team want to play a map uh, and some of the key picks that you might expect. So things like, okay, I need to know how I'm going to be playing against, say, Arya Zoe, for example, is notoriously yeah. powerful. Uh, and, and that tends to be a better focus just because of how um, tricky reading teams coming into mm. playoffs on a new patch with such um, unusual takes on the game can be. I mean, we started to see a little hint of that from their playoffs matches. We saw it in round one, playing on this new patch. Though, personally, I don't feel like we've seen many secrets or much hidden technology no. yet from either of these teams. Especially... For the others. <laughs> yeah, but we've already started seeing something from V3 Sengoku. So, mystery tech involved, side selection, rotations... 
all these things, do we think we're going to be seeing some crazy things that we saw in our previous round two match versus, um, and coming into this one? I mean, this is Crest Gaming at DFM. Two teams that love to five head the, the, uh, the other team. Uh, are we going to see new stuff? Almost certainly. I think that once you get down to like game three, game four in a series, if it ends up, uh, even mm. if it is ending, it being a little bit one-sided, people tend to, as I say, dig a little bit deeper into the barrel of crazy. That seems fair. And both of these teams are ones which I believe can adapt in very different ways to the rest of our LGL teams. Um, are we going to... I mean, there are some things I think we're probably going to see perma-banned and stuff. I mean, CGA really didn't want Lilia no. in the game in their first round series. No. I don't see why they would change that, particularly because I think that Steel is a very good pathing jungler. Um, although, maybe that's a trap pick for DFM because they do love their early ganking, too early pressure. Yeah. But anyway, stuff like that. Stuff like Caitlyn's probably not going to get play. It's probably not going to um, get through the pick and bans either. That'd be very exciting to see if it does get through, I guess. Um, I don't think we're ever going to see her at this point. Yeah. I think it will depend on uh, which positions are being stretched the furthest, though, as to see where we're going to get new stuff out of, because I know that, I mean, DFM, last time they played against CGA, they chose red side. Mm -hmm. um, they five-banned Arya and had last pick mid. Is that going to mean Arya's got something really strange cooked up? Well, he better mm -hmm. do, because they might do it again today. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's important. That is something that I completely forgot about, that Chris Gaming Act yep. was sometimes choosing to play red side just so they could always have the last pick potential for Aria. Mm. They have really good red, red side stats. They, they it's do. just the patch is really blue side favored, right? Yeah. You, yes. They have 100% first dragon, first dragon rate on red side throughout this split. That can sometimes be a bit of a trap statistic, but getting those early dragons is a really important thing. We've Gandhi. seen that in so many of our playoffs so far. Yeah, and especially when a team also has a high um, Rift Herald percentage with that first dragon as yeah. well. It means they're just dominating Bring across everything. the map. Yeah, especially for the early game. Even if it's like they can lose a lane, they're still getting everything else, which you can almost sacrifice a lane for. Gentlemen, Lil Birdie's told me that uh, the official stream might be soon going over <laughs> to the pick and ban phase, meaning that I must rip off the band-aid as I love to say and ask you gentlemen, who's winning, score, and then the other person, because then we'll go into why from both of you. Uh, initialize first. I think this will be 3-2 to DFM. Okay. Nymera. I think this is going to be 3-1 to DFM. Bold. Wow. I'm gonna stick to my pickums if it was still burning core in this spot. It's gonna be three one crest gaming act. I gotta stick with it. I gotta stick with <laughs> it. I feel I just feel good about CGA yeah. at the moment. And I'm hopeful. The reason I'm partly doing it is I'm hopeful for um sp summer split uh CGA before week si uh before week seven. If I get that one, I'm, I'm I feel great about my prediction. Yeah. If I don't, I don't feel I so good. Yeah. And again, a lot of it rides on the first game, uh, the meta mm. read, if DFM pull up something wacky which has to be banned for the rest of the series, it's going to really screw over someone like CGO. Yeah, and there's also something to be said though, that both of these teams play to each other's weaknesses, frankly. DFM are massively yeah. about the early game leads they can get. They're one of our best early game teams in the league. CJ are one of the worst. DFM throw games consistently post 15 minutes at that fourth rate, that second herald. Where CJ want to be where fighting. Where CJ want to be fighting. Huh. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where, like, if DFM really hit CJ's weakness hard and get a massive lead, maybe CJ can't fight back. On the other hand, if CJ can punish DFM's poor decision making around those sort of mid game objectives, maybe they can bring it back. And that's what makes this game so exciting, so potentially quite hard to read as well. So, 2 DFM, 1 CGA, 3-1, 3-1, Almost regardless, we're saying it's not going to be a 3-0. Why do neither of us, why do none of us really think there's going to be a 3-0 shutout? Just out of interest, because this is CGA. They could just coin flip three wins, potentially, right? Yes. <laughs> That's the problem, right? But the thing is that the, 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 we, we, I, I've, um, towards the last couple of weeks, I've tried to ref, uh, refrain from using coin flip quite as much because that implies a 50-50. Remember that CJ have had a really good record this split? Mm. However, then you go against DFM. Uh, CJ was 0-2 versus DFM in, the, in spring split. They didn't face themselves, face each other in playoffs. Then in summer, they went 1-1. One one. Importantly, that last loss coming at, at the very last week of playoffs, uh, in the playoffs regular season, rather. Yep. Um, 
there is a chance that CJ do just randomly pull it out of the bag for three games in a row. The thing is, I think that DFM are a team that are varied enough to adapt just as much as CGA are in terms of a lot of their champion pools, right? Mm. CJ in the mid lane particularly can change the outlook of their team right off of one pick for Arya. Um, that's why I think regardless of who wins the first couple of games, we're probably going to see a hit back. The question is if that first game is enough to just consign the series already. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think as well for me, there is something to... Part of the reason it is so difficult is that it's not like it's uh, someone with a clear stylistic advantage. Okay. As we said, it's both teams kind of attacking each other's weaknesses with their strengths. Uh, and that can make things quite volatile, especially when both teams uh, have shown pretty high highs and also, frankly, pretty low lows. Mm. In the in in the last series we saw from them even so, it can be quite difficult to tell exactly where things are going and also frankly they're going to have things hidden away which does make things a little tricky to work out what's going on. Yes, absolutely. I mean when you've you've got players on these teams like Nap, like Ebby, who have been fighting each other in the top lane for. It feels like years, they've got champion pools huge and far and wide, but also narrow depending on meta. It's a you're not really quite sure what these players could bring out the bag. Ciros, I have no idea. I've been yelling at him to play two champions for, like, almost two splits now. And he could just pull one of them out, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, of course he's good at them. I, I'm not surprised he's good at LeBlanc. Yeah, on, on that note, I, it, for me, it's very important that Seros finally played Azir again mm, in playoffs. Uh -huh. I've been, this, it's the one pick which he actually has shown in the last year where I'm like, hey, this is super matter and he plays it karma mid's been nerfed now that's something which he was crouching on before the zigs is actually very powerful now mm -hmm. i don't mind him playing that even though that used to be a pocket pick of his now it's just a good pick yes yeah. but the azir Ouch. is blind pickable into so many different matchups you know it's a takeaway in this matchup too Arya does play that champion when he's been denied a lot of other stuff mm. i really want to see him back on this pick because it's so important in the meta and he finally showed it versus burning core and it wasn't a win yeah, I mean, even something like the Nico being back in meta is yeah, not a bad true, thing, yeah. and it's flexible, right? We saw it the other night, well, yesterday, yesterday evening from G2's top lane, or else they could flex it top as well. That kind of thing is just a little bit of breathing space for DFM in these in this particular patch, which uh, partly why I'm giving him a slight edge. But we did see, sadly, Azir get absolute um, have a zero impact for Sengoku in our previous round, mm, yeah. meaning that even though Cirrus has picked up this yes. champion. It's against Arya, and it was Pyrian piloting the Azir, so it could be very difficult, right, for Ciros? Yeah, I, I, I do think that Pyrian just opted into a zero damage team fight build, um, which really didn't help his odds at all. Don't disagree I, I at all. With, um, I don't disagree at all. Yeah, <laughs> Luden's Comet. L going Luden's into Comet and then just completely forgoing something like Leandri is, 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 is a is a set mid. Anyway, we griped about that so much. It is very annoying to watch. Um, in private, in private. I think that the thing... Yeah, my, my, thing, my, thing, my thing about Arya and Saros is that um, even if they don't win lane, importantly, they find a way to make themselves relevant in the game. Mm. I think that's something which Pyrian can sometimes struggle to do even when he does win lane. I remember back to spring finals, right? Pyrian was winning lane and doing pretty well versus DFM and just couldn't leverage his advantage. That probably won't happen to either of these mid laners. They always find ways into the game. I mean, we saw Arya mm, even in... Yeah. Um, when he's put down early on Syndra in that game one, he just ends up finding that one one shot combo onto the AD carries the Syndra because that champion can do that apparently. True. Uh, what a fun woman of darkness. And Saros, I mean, he is the master of smoke and mirrors in the LJL, really. I mean, unless you count Ninja, who's who unfortunately didn't get to play this split yes. because of various visa restrictions due to COVID travel. Um, that's the old mid laner of uh, Rascal Justice mm -hmm. from Spring, for those of you that don't know. Yeah. But both these guys just have ways to play make themselves into relevant situations. Yeah, the, there's a lot of options out there for the teams, and I mean, initialize mm. for yourself, sir. You're a, we, we know you're a, a little bit of a DFM sympathizer. Chill, no, no. <laughs> um, coming into this, what what are your thoughts really about DFM coming in? Are, are you how deep of a run are you expecting them to make? Are you expecting them to go all the way to world still? Or like, I'm just kind of I'm interested in getting a bit of a conversation there about that. Oh, actually, sorry, initialize. You can't pick and bad faces started. We don't have a timer. Gentlemen, take it away. We'll have that conversation maybe in game instead. We'll be Crest Gaming Act versus Detonation. Focus me here in round two of the playoffs. CGA opting for blue side first game. And their roster will be Nap, Unica, Aria, Gango, and Grendel. 
However, what that means is that Detonation Focus Me will be on the red side for game one of this playoff series. It's Ebby, Steel, Seros, Utapon, and Gang, that fantastic five, taking up the rift again. Volibear and Lilia are taken away. Those uh, woodland creatures will not be allowed out. Yeah. On Maybe the other they side should uh, ban away, like, Elderwood Hecarim. Not not just Hecarim, oh. but, but just, just the, the skin. S just the skin yeah. Elderwood. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, I would be okay with that. Uh, on the other side, though, we've we've got Set and Caitlyn <laughs> off the table, alongside yes. Utapon's Ezreal now mm. as well. Not not to dissuade you from your Elderwood oh. Hecarim argument, but there are, in fact, <laughs> bans coming yeah, through, like, this, Twisted Fate here the, as well from DFM. They're haunted by Honey from that round one game where he did just get so very far ahead, and CJ just couldn't shut him down. Okay, so, Ooh. first pick Lucian. Remember we saw this in game four from CJ. It went bot lane alongside Lux. Very lane dominant. However, we know that Arya has played it before. In fact, I remember back to CJ in their first matchup versus DFM in spring played this when and um, when DFM were on their win streak. Unfortunately, they did lose that. But Arya did end up getting a solo kill onto Saras in that matchup. Mm, it's it was a one for one. But uh, yeah. yeah, and it's also one of those things where at the minute Lucian's been kind of rising in priority again. Mm. We've seen it, maybe we've seen it, but there is a world where it goes top as well. That's coming out. But DFM respond against Lucian with uh, the tried and true top lane combo of Renekton Nidalee. Okay, so now the Lucian's been locked in with the Syndra, so there is a flex between both of those champions going either mid lane or bot lane, and the Graves has been locked in. You have only a few champions which really work to work safely versus Renekton and Nidalee. For me, that's Gangplank and Mordekaiser are the two which are probably most meta right now. Yeah. Um, the question is, can you engineer a map state where it doesn't matter so much so dfm knowing that they're knowing one of two champions that will be in that mid lane lock in the heimendinger and just say okay saros this is your uh your champion of choice mm -hmm. have at it and i know duck dong i never forget i can't quite pronounce his name over for the it's not prince it's um dynamics over oh. in the lck likes the heimendinger into lucian match yeah uh, that's fair because lucian loves to dodge skill shots Doing that against a Heimendinger kind of awkward because most of his damage is through the turrets. Of course, if you do, if you dodge out in the bomb, things get very awkward for the um, Heimendinger because you don't get that extra beam sure. coming through from your turrets and all that other stuff. Doesn't mean you can't force that lane quite as hard, though. All right, so now on to phase two of the ban. Senna away from Utapon makes a lot of sense. Very strong at the minute in the current meta. Uh, and Utapon has had some pretty damn good games on it. Late game Senna, uh, only the other day, was oh, yes. doing some oh, yes. very nasty things in the LCK. And, oh, sorry, the LCK into the LJL here. Yes, and, that one. <laughs> same thing, right? Uh, V3 uh -huh. versus Sengok Gaming. Not clear. Exactly, we're at the same mm. level, I like okay. to believe. But it will be Orn as well, will be DFM's mm. final. So Orn can outplay Aaron X in Italy. Can. I think um, it's it's less likely to. Because you can ignore one of the stuns with, with your W, the Bally's Breath, right? And it gives you that extra movement speed and denies the CCF. Not the extra movement speed. And it makes you uh, unstoppable for a certain amount of time. So we have seen. The Yumi taken away, that is, a choice pairing with the, um, the Lucian allows you to survive the laning phase. Now you see that Leona locked in, potentially denies some enchanters from being in because you're going to get all in in that bot lane. However, I think if you go something like Aftershock or Guardian Lux, I think you can still play that lane. And we know that CJ have played that just last play uh, just last round. Okay, so, a bit more engaged now. They've got the famous Heimer's Sh Yes! Shen! Oh, I love it! In. Oh, I know you've been asking. so long! Nah in particular to pick oh. this up for a while so it could be potentially another way to get so, themselves so, so. out of the difficult lane the last time we saw nap play shen was in their three cga's three two lost last year to v3 with both these two, those teams having different rosters in ljl 2019 summer playoffs we have the lux being hoggled over to now i think that would be really good gives you this double long range cc uh engage if you get to a point where you can start sieging around a mm -hmm. tower around objective cj have multiple ways to start playing around that now okay they are into a Leona, though, and that means you've got to be very aware as a Syndra and Lux about your positioning because you don't have a way out of that Solar Flare as well, which could be pretty terrifying. Okay. A Felios locked in. A little risky versus Lux Syndra in my eyes. This, yes. However, Lucian, Shen, Graves are very short range, so you're basically saying that the three shorter range champions are more important than the two long range champions. I'll outplay those guys, and then we'll deal about the people running into me. And we know what a Phileos can do in that kind of situation. If you run into him, he is still very, very strong. It's just when people are longer range, he gets easier to deny him from a team fight. As you're saying, if a Scatter of the Week comes through, if a Light Binding comes through, a Phileos loses a lot of effectiveness. And uh, just a reminder, guys, this is Heimerdinger plus Utapon, who does love Crescendo. Yeah, the double, the, the double turrets. Double turrets is 
really obnoxious around objectives. And as we said, uh -huh. there's not really that many people who want to walk through it. Uh -huh. Even Nap won't be particularly happy about just taking shots with the... Uh, throw this out there, though. Um, so turrets are great and all. But you can, can move them with Syndra, Syndra W. That's true. That is very true. Yeah, so I, I, I do really like this... Um, hang on, give me one second. I, Sam, I believe your phone just disconnected from... Oh, did it really? Yes, that's it did. That's uh, kind of might awkward. be my... I'm not quite sure why it's I'm just aware that might affect cameras a little bit. Uh, that's it worth point. Us, we'll have, we'll have, have a bit of look. I'm not quite sure yeah, why it's anyway. done that, but we're back. So, anyway, regardless of reasoning, when, who, what, where, when, and why, and all that stuff, we are here with the draft fully completed, and I love what CGF come out with. We are asking immediately, is anyone going to bring out anything new? Nothing particularly new from DFM in their picks they've picked right now. CGA, the, like I said, I've wanted to see the, 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 the Shen from that for a very long time. It fits into his kind of playstyle. He can play weak side. You can end up um, dodging out the uh, the Renekton stun mm -hmm. with the, the dodge field, of course. And you do have a decent lane matchup in Twin C, which means you can survive that Renekton Nidalee combo as long as you use your cooldowns well enough. However, we know that Ebi is such a lane dominant top laner. It's not like Shen's cooldowns at Spirit's <clears throat> Refuge are especially short, that so, one, yeah. so you can get caught out if you're not careful or if uh, you can get that ability but, baited out of you. But, but play it well and you have absolutely got all the tools you need to turn it around. And honestly, Shen Graves isn't a bad setup either. Hmm. And it's not like Renekton Stun is a particularly short cooldown at first rank with no CDR either. True that. So... You know that if he's going to throw out the stun, you'd probably just rather block it. It's more about your wave positioning, right? You want to be in a position where you can just taunt back to tower and then um, do what you can there. Remember that Shen had a couple of buffs recently? His mm -hmm. passive has an extra scaling onto it. It means he's just much more survivable. As you can see over on the mainstream at this point as well, you can see these early game stats. DFM versus CGA. It is a roughly 1,600 gold differential on mm. show there, which is kind of telling about how good DFM but, can be in the early game. It's just around, if you check out that Rift Herald count, but, that second Rift Herald but, particularly, the way they start throwing things around. The thing for me is that if you give me a 15 minute time and it's, 60, it's 1600 gold mm -hmm. uh, between the two teams, I don't think that's a large enough lead to actually seal that game. I think you need more than that. You need to go above your average as DFM to really be confident that you're going to close out these games. With this kind of composition, yeah, you think, okay, right, maybe we can zone off with the Ophelios and the Heimerdinger. But it's not like, as we've been saying, there aren't some long-range engage options for CJ to work with. It's not quite the same as having a, a solo nope. flare for yourself. You don't have a Call of the Forge Guard to force uh, AoE CC. You are waiting for that one pick. However, that one pick might end up sealing a lot of these fights. So... Got to see whether those early game stats from DFM can mm. carry to them a place where CGA can't carry themselves uh, via some good mid to late game team fighting. It's what they're known for on mm. both sides, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays. That was probably what makes this matchup such a curious yeah. stylistic one, if nothing else. And the thing is, though, like we look at these two games, and uh, the second game was very one-sided. You look at that, uh, there, there was basically no real look in for CJ in that game. Um, they as we said, put uh, um, Ari into a really awkward spot with his pick, and they put him in a zero into the Heimlinger, actually. They played that last time they were against him. And just hyper ganked that lane. They just focused down on mid after putting five bans against him in the pick and ban phase two. Um, the first game was much more back and forth. We saw a lot of Ash arrows going across the place. Although the scrappiness ended up winning out with CGA. It looked like mm -hmm. um, DFM didn't quite have quite the same handle on what they could and couldn't do during that game. They overextended. They stayed too long in objectives. Yep. Even with a bar to get them out of various objective pits with um, Magical Journey. Some great pillars to interrupt. Some great pillars to interrupt. <laughs> um, well, at least slow people down on their yes. way over to those things. Um, however, you know, it's a big patch change between those times. This game is now 10-16, and I'm looking forward to it. We're now entering onto the rift. Game on, says the official stream, and uh, here we are. First game of this all-important series. CGA have had one of their best splits in a long time. Aria, our best mid laner, frankly, in the league, versus a struggling DFM, a DFM that really are looking to prove themselves in the same vein of, say, G2 right now, who are having a much better players after a rough uh, season, or rather split, I think it's probably fair to say. And I suppose Lexi was asking me, well, what, did, what do I think about DFM's chances of getting <laughs> to finals? More importantly, I think, is what does DFM think about their chance to gain the finals? Because 
as an organization, as a set well, of players, they won't brook not getting to finals. But, well, they've already lost two turrets, and that's normally and that's not a good thing. Off two Heimendinger turrets. Uh, two Heimendinger, so yeah. Thinking, wow, that's, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen two turrets fall before two uh, minutes. Yeah, no, that's the Olaf Trundle comp. Uh, it's Olaf one for all. It's Trundle one for all, where you just chomp down on turrets. <laughs> Ah, uh, funnily enough, that's actually happened before. I've uh, unfortunately experienced that. However, the experience for these two teams starts here on the rift. It starts now. Okay, so you can see it is bot side starts for both junglers. Steal over by his blue buff. Graves finishing up his red. We'll see where they decide to go early on. Suggestion that we're going to end up around this Renekton Chen matchup, which is no real surprise for Renekton Nidalee at the moment. Unico's going buff to buff. He might, in that case, go for a very early gank top. Nidalee is going for a full clear, or he can find himself into that top side of DFM. We have this level one hovered over in the bot lane now. I really want to see how this 2v2 goes. Grendel had a great game on this Lux in game four versus the Hawks. I want to see him, what he can do in this matchup, because obviously, Youth and Gang have a very strong bot lane. Yeah, you can see Grave still over by his Gromp at this point, maybe going for that gank, and you're right, that bot lane, uh, Grendel's looks was pretty damn good. Especially once he, uh, once he got his obligatory one face check out of the way, he was, he was doing pretty well. <laughs> out, even with a champion where you can actually face check for yourself by throwing the E in, uh, he just he just didn't, didn't uh, <laughs> it didn't occur to him. So, Unico has actually stopped off for his Gromp, sees that top lane is not really in a position to be ganked, however, he was on call around that top lane, uh, where Steel had gone for that full clear, and is still continuing to do so. Mid lane, we see what Heimerdinger does, he permanently shoves in, even though Arya did clear out a couple of his turrets early, um, and, you know, just uses the W, ends up displacing those turrets, he can actually throw it under turret if he really wants to clear it quickly. Uh. Decides against it, and just gets a good stun there, though. Scout of the week. Yeah, but Such also, 10-16 uh, Cinderella, less damage on the queue, much more mana cost on the queue. You can yep. see what this ended up to, even with biscuits and in inventory. Very low on the mana. He doesn't even have enough mana for a full combo now. Part of that is probably actually just queuing those turrets early no, well, on late. Well, he wasn't queuing the turrets. He was walking up an orb. Oh, just ordering that? Yeah, he, he, yeah you, he you, do, well. you do slightly outrange them. Um, Too busy checking the minimap. <laughs> Something like that while you're waxing lyrical about the state of the league, which is of course something I love to hear you do, and it's very nice to hear your eloquence on the LJL. Uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta focus on the mid lane matchup, as I do. Yes, yeah, so pre one minute when people are emoting, yes, yeah, that's exactly, yes, exactly where that's that. exactly where you focus should why. be. You can see, of course, Steel is on vision here from the war that uh, Unica played oh, earlier, but now Nap is uh, under turret, and there is a Renekton at level four, along with a Nidalee at level four, that really want this dive. CG are going to try and respond to the bot side there. They've got the level 3 advantage down here. Utapon is in trouble. He gets bound. There's the teleport coming up. But the stun under turret. He's in so much trouble. And Gango goes down for first blood. That's what we like to see in RNG. He knows he's playing the Uzi get camp lane. The wrong person takes aggro. And for DFM, the right person goes down. At least he has the teleport to come back to lane for the side of CGA. And more importantly oh, for them, in again. some ways, we see that Nap is going to uh, survive that top lane focus too. He's walking forward. Utapon will also be forced to back now. In fact, because of the wave positioning, they might end up losing a little bit on the bot side of the map because uh, the wave will be pushing into CGA's side. Okay, going back into replay, let's see how all of this went down. So, Grendel taking aggro for the first bit, and then, oh, just as he steps outside, Gang with the... Gang just judges that so well. He knows there's no clans on Gango. Grendel steps out of the turret. He might have been able to, to, to tank up one more turret shot, but that's the danger of ganking a Leona. Even at level two, level three, whatever, right? It means that you... Oh, good turret. Uh, uh, taunt under turret. In the same vein in the top side. But yes, it, you go with the Leona under that tower, and she can bind you up for forever. Has led to some slight CS advantage, of course. Seros had to teleport to respond there, gave Arya free time, and a teleport back to mid, which has kind of given him a little bit of an item advantage right there. Uh, and it has, of course, led to some CS down here as well, as we said. Grand yeah, same. Look, look, look at where that wave position is. Yeah. As much as it's a kill, the kill doesn't go to the Aphelios, and now that Lucian feeling pretty good. Utapon, or Steel rather, and potentially a bit of bother. Bind. Does get by him. Flash in from Unica. Might flash out from Steel. Flash a flash in for junglers go. Okay, right. So who's it more important to have your flash away from? The Nidalee or the Graves? Given how DFM um, are playing against these two long range CC, if Steel gets caught by a binding now, he probably dies. Graves on the other side. Yeah, I mean, there is, of course, the Heimerdinger ult and the Leon ult too. So it's actually relative parity between the junglers on who is more at risk in this situation now. Okay, so. We can see unipon has got the pickaxe to long swords right now, so fighting stats pretty good for the Aphelios. Oh, it's, it's CS stats not fantastic. Uh, it's, it's not 
awfully different, and again, just the kit of Lucian is just very lane dominant. True. What this does mean is that CGA will be looking at this first dragon. DFM, we talked about their early stats being really good. Their first blood rate um, is really pretty impressive. Uh, on blue side, in fact, they have a 90% first That's blood rate. very um, They're actually. currently on red side, and we talked about how they had a bit lesser stats on that side, uh, one of which is their first dragon rate, as far as I'm aware. Although, overall, they do have an 80% first dragon rate in CGA. We talked about their red side dragon being better. Okay, taunt missing to turret there. Um, ebby has been, you know, just doing his regular thing as Renekton, getting that lane dominance. Steel, using that as a platform, goes into the top side jungle and stealing away his Gromp. And uh, it's kind of the difference in pressure, right? CGA playing to bot line, bot lane prevalence. Bot line, that's the Korean terminology. Uh, they say line. They do. But of course, over for DFM, they have got the oh, Renekton. Unica. So Unica's going to find Steel and Ebby down here. They find the smoke screen. Aria in a bit of trouble here, caught between a few people. But Nap now roaming down. Remember, there is the stand United available. But now that is a very, very in trouble. Graves, who's going to find a very angry crocodile on his face. They get out. Steel falls in response. It will be Aria who picks that one up. One for one in the jungle. One for one. But the fight still goes on. They have flashes. They have stuns. They do. But Ebby's now got his. Dominus ended, but that's a good stun from Seros to bring a lot of damage onto Nap, who's in a lot of trouble. The taunt comes out, but Ebby gets that kill. Grendel's roamed up, but he's just not here in time. Light binding through the blue buff won't catch someone on the other side, and DFM come out with the extra kill. They do, it's two kills onto the Renekton, that one champion, which is so, so strong with those early game leads. Coming into the mid-game team fights, we know that DFM has sometimes struggled to make things stick in. The junglers both die, means that neither of them will be sticking around that map. Fortunately, I guess for CGA, it's the Shen which ends up dying, and you'd rather the farm be taken away from Shen rather than someone like the Syndra. Syndra picks up a kill, we know what Arya can do mm -hmm. with that champion. So overall, kind of things are going to the script right now, aren't they? Yes, and it's about 1,500 gold lead for DFM here at 8 minutes, which is not at that 15 minute mark. We said, well, they want to be ahead of that 1,500 gold lead, but that, they're pretty happy with how things are going here. Yes, they're themselves. not unhappy with this. They're not unhappy with this, exactly. Renekton is ahead, but Evie's done this a few times. He's got ahead in lane and then kind of overextended yeah. in the and mid game looking for engages in particular. And the thing is, Lux and Syndra are really, really good against people that overextend. You go too deep and you get Q all e so you end up having that multiple stun from the Syndra. Uh, we'll have to see how these top line traps, uh, t not um, trades, not the traps, I see the niddly on the screen. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Um, we see that actually it's still not awful for Nap. He can still hold his own in some of those trades. Not yet Blade the Rune King made for Ebby. He'll be looking towards that item first though. He absolutely will. And you can see with both supports out of lane looking to try and contest that Rift Herald, which Steel kind of took away all by his lonesome that uh, it's left the AD carries alone in that bot side. As I speak about it, Gang's just walking back into lane and putting some wards down, so uh, I made a liar. That's the one. So bot lane, we do have that CS lead still for Gango. A lot of that came off of that early kill and the early reset, being a little bit awkward for once he didn't get that kill and he didn't get a lot of the waves after that point. There is that slight XP advantage, which has gone alongside that too. Gango has played safe after that point, but Ooh, that's a flash he does the, get the Zenith Blade, the Solar Flare as well, and now Beautiful stepping forward with the Onslaught, but that is a light binding flash out from Gango to avoid the Moonlight Vigil, and it will be Summoner's Burn from both bot laners, uh, we can see flash down for Gango and Grendel flash down for Gang. Yeah, Gang the Ignite too. What this means is that there are no supports on the top side for a potential dive, and that's what they're aiming for. Taunt under turret, spear misses. That's a bit of a sad news for Ebby, who has to pop his Dominus here. They're still thinking about this, but they know, of course, the taunt is now down. They're looking to try and play for the Herald here. They finally found the Renekton Nidalee combo, and that was actually pretty easy after what looked like a pretty... Uh, Awkward start. start. Yeah, exactly. But that's what Dominus allows you to do. The extra HP, even though Nap does get that damage under tower, the cooldowns were used, and it's another death for the Shen. He does have his ultimate. He's still the same champion he's going to be. But giving that gold over to the Renekton, who does want to reach those first two items quicker than the pace of the game to be ahead of that um, metaphorical curve, was very important for this champion. We as casters have kind of had this statement across the world, frankly, in every region. 
play to the global, attack the global, and that's what DFM have been doing thus far. It is a very fat lead for this Renekton right now. 2-0-1, all plates in topside. Hell, the Herald gets a second charge onto this tier two. It does. I don't know if they're going to be able to return for that turret. However, Ceres has been a player to split push on the home end again and use his teleport to come back in, use his turrets to take down a lot of these inner turrets before um, you normally expect them to go down. So maybe something they can angle towards. We saw CGA walk into the bottom side, jungle take out that blue buff. DFM return the favor on the top side. However, it will of course be um, Aria who has been the better beneficiary of this. He's got himself a slim lead in that mid lane. And part of that again was from that teleport Stunned. that Seros had to come through. But wait, Grendel's here as well. They get the massive combo with a great roam from Grendel into the mid lane. And this is what we're talking about. The long range CC. Who needs hard engage when you do have the light binding and of course the scatter of the week. Seros goes down. He does have teleport to get back into the lane. Which means that this dragon is not yet a consigned thing. Alright, now Utapon is in a spot of bother here. Takes Ooh. a lot of damage. Has to heal. Is going to be alive, but that's with this second Drake spawning. I don't think DFM can even think about contesting anymore. Utapon might well have to flash out of here. There's the Shell Shendal ult coming through. Utapon over the back, but there is Grant Gang around as well. Unica now in trouble. He's gone too deep. Steel turns it around. Ebi's teleported in, and Seros has respawned. Now CGA are getting corralled. The solar flare is monumental. And now Ebi's flying in. He's got Dominus rolling, and DFM find everything they could once, but they do lose the jungler. They could still go for Drake, but there will be no smite on either side. Four for one. They use the Shenel to come in, but Utapon holds his nerve, gets out, and his team finds the team fight victory. DFM run through the bot side jungle, taking away jungle camps. Just to add salt to that wound, is only Arya walking away alive. Let's check that replay one more time. I thought Udapon was done for yeah, after this He's arc. here alone, and they do know that they do have the teleport at least. And the both ultimates from the Graves and the Lucian come through and chunk him out very, very low. CGA's thought process now is that, okay, Udapon, no heal, does have the flash to get out. But Shen ult using that aggressively, it does channel faster than a teleport, might be able to take away the AD carry. And at that point, you might end up getting that kill onto Utapon before the fight starts in earnest. I think Unica flashes just a hair too late, so that Shen is left behind when he flashes forward. It means that he's not in range for the taunt. The Aphelios survives, and then, of course, Ebi comes in, and we know how strong he is right now. Oh, my days. I have also got to say that Gang has been smurfing been really, really in these last really two good. series. Proud v Gang in the Burning Call versus Detonation Focus Me series in round one was a pretty amazing match at Proud's Bar, turn around things that should never happen. Gang's Leona on the other side was also doing some insane things on the uh, on the Leona. He's going to be looking to reprise that in this game. He got first blood, he gets a great solar flare, he gets the Zenith Blade over the wall. What can this man not do on the champion? <laughs> Well, we'll have to see whether he can uh, close out the game first. We'll see. Oh, that's, that's, that's the important thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we talk about 15 minutes. Give, take a 1,600 gold lead, and I'll give that to CGA because they're so good at fighting in the mid-game. Well, what about a 4,000 gold huge. lead at 14 minutes? Spear lands, doesn't steal away. The red buff, but steel is, of course, slightly ahead of Unica with the kill XP coming through. 3, 2, and 3. I'm pretty happy in that jungle matchup. He is so... Point of pressure though, Arya is still doing pretty well, he's Utica's farming on, very... He's on vision here. He is, he's gonna get solar flare, he's gonna find a spear in the face into a zenith blade! DFM put the graves in the dirt for the third time and now Seros and Ebi are just sieging around this mid lane and Arya can't walk up. I was about to say, he's a man with a point of pressure but at this point he's getting zoned away from the mid lane turret. I remember they don't have a is there, <laughs> it's very important. So, uh, that was just poor vision control by CJ. Unica sat on a ward, gets killed by Gang, and once again, Leona comes up very, very high value in this sort of map state. And our MVP for DFM versus Burning Core was Steel. He absolutely crushed in that series in pretty much every game, out-jungled once of mm -hmm. all people in the early game as well. And in this game, he's 4-2-3. and three. So Up in CS has been involved in seven of the nine kills and he's kind of jungle diffing this game at the minute early on. He is and this is something which I was kind of worried about for the perspective of CJ. CFM coming in well prepared, they come in knowing what they can play around, light binding lands, second herald, this is where DFM have thrown games before remember, this could be a turning point. It could be but DFM's so no strong right now and you're fighting into the Heimerding, into the Aphelios but not with turrets up it's worth saying. That's just too much zoning and they don't have vision, they can't walk in and DFM do take this one. Breathe a sigh of relief those who were 
are afraid of DFM throwing there. Exactly. They do have Shen on the bot side. We'll be getting some work done towards that bot lane. Mm -hmm. There is the Solar Flare now back up and available, but most of the flashes for CJ are still there. Importantly, Arya's is not. Arya is still... Finally, Mike, I should say it, doing pretty well in this game. He's up in farm, partly because, of course, Seros has aggressively teleported bot lane a couple of times, sacked his waves to do so. But that does mean the Syndra... And also the fact that Ari's is good at yeah, picking exactly. up CS. <laughs> and Ari is just really good on top of that. It has led to about a 20 CS lead, which is great news. Problem is, the rest of his map's kind of falling apart, and he's already down 5k as a team right now. Uh, and we know that Arya can pull off some pretty magical things on this champ. But not pretty much every champion, let's be honest. But will it be enough to get himself a pick onto an important carry? There is no stopwatch for uh, Heimerdinger, which can be an important mm -hmm. outplay tool in these kind of situations. Same thing can be said for Utapon. So if you find that one person disconnected from the rest of the team, yeah, it might end up being the thing which really solves this game. So while there is a pretty huge advantage on the top side of the map for DFM, importantly for me, Syndra and Lucian are still in this game. They're the Graves easy. is not going to be doing much. Don't get me wrong, he's a smokescreen bot now. That's what he does. He'll be throwing over the collateral damage. <laughs> he is the collateral damage. He is he's the, the, yeah. in, in the team fight, he is who else falls down and hits. Yeah, it's like, oh, and Unica dies. Um, that will be a lot of what happens in this game. Uh, mm. Sorry for leaking the script. But if you're <laughs> diving in as a two-level disadvantaged jungler into a Leona who is currently 1-0-5, has Tabby chain vest alongside some HP from that support item too, uh, you're not feeling too happy about life. Okay, so Ari has teleport. You've given up your existence privileges. <laughs> Who needed that, really? Do you, have, do you have a card for your existence privileges? Ah, uh, it's like a library card. Uh, uh, you, know, uh, like you, you check it out check, every now and then. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, see, see you in, like, another existence. And Nap's like, down 50 CS, sees the spear yeah. over the back of the water. I can't be here again. I'm going to leave this tower. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Shen is more economic in terms of low economy than a Renekton. You can suffer to have some early game losses but as the one person who wants to be maybe tanking up a little bit of damage that does suck for your game plan second herald summon bot we know that dfm have struggled with that second a second herald before but they got that very cleanly using their zoning potential it's going to go down into that bot lane give more gold over to guess who it's the crocodile it's ebby and they will get themselves a second dragon as well it is an ocean rift we haven't touched on that yet so yep. two dragons over to dfm Ari, though, has managed to shove this wave in all the way from his tier 2 into this tier 1, gets the turret, he gets a massive amount of CS. You can see Heimerdinger waiting around up there looking to see whether he can pick something up. Ebby has found Grendel and Nap down here, who's trying to come and support this Herald push, or rather dissuade it. <sighs> the thing is, because... Uh, okay, so at least Unica did manage to take Krogs on the top side of the map, take some of that top side jungle, but he's still down almost 10 camps now. Mm. And a lot of this is because Nidley farms very quickly, even when ahead, we see that there is now a st well, there's still that two level lead, which is level 11. And it has the Athenes on Holy Grail, has the Merc Trebs too. This Nidley is hard to pick off because of the amount of MR and the amount of tenacity too now. Yeah, she will be pretty difficult to do. She's outside of that 100 to 0 range, which is kind of where Arya wanted to be at this point in the well, game. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we see about that. I mean, with Grendel there as well, there is room where the uh, final spark comes in as well, and that absolutely will die up in Italy. You throw two ultimates at that mm. one champion, and she will die. And Also, very, there's never going to be a point really where that's not going to be Very effect. importantly, from the other matches we've seen, Mikhail's built up for the Lux. Watch out for that. Can deny the Ooh. Solar Flare. Takes a spit of the face, though, because the other thing that Lux is is always pretty damn squishy herself. Ebby's in the front line. DFM looking to find Ow. another spear. Lance, that is a scout of the week onto Steel, who's pretty scary. Collateral damage came over the back. But wait, the Moonlight Vigil lands, and Utapon gets the kill on a Grendel. Too much poke landing. And now in a 4v5, DFM looking to chase in Unica. Takes a blade of the ring into the face. Has to flash away, but now Steel, Steel might be in trouble. Culling comes out, but he will survive. Solar Flare comes down, but it's only slows. Now the bouncing grenades are coming out. It stuns too. That's fantastic from Seros over the wall. Ebby gets that kill and the Lucian falls down stepping too far forwards. CJ just too far behind. Grendel doesn't have anyone around to give himself the own guardian shield and the crit comes through from the infinity edge. Calibrum ultimate from follow up after auto attack. That one from Youth Bond goes down one and two. This duo lane they might have had a bit of a CS lead. It just doesn't matter in these fights. All right, here we go again. We'll see a number of spears land and things go wrong real fast. They do. They're trying to fight over Red Buff, trying to get any semblance of a fight, trying to find a pickoff. They have a pink ward. Grendel sees these skill shots coming. He just doesn't end up weaving away from two and then three. He has flash. He just doesn't respect the damage coming out. and He dies. 360 damage on that crit. More than enough to take down the support. 
Lux is squishy at the best of times in a solo lane as a support. She can put out the damage, but without that shield up, she can't really take it. And the rest of this fight continues. Yeah. That grenade. That grenade. Well, the thing about the the hymning a regular grenade is that if you get hit on the outside edge, it just slows you instead of stuns. The ultimate grenade just, just stuns you. And that's what happens to Gango. He gets hit by it, does get taken down. And just the long range follow up for DFM has been enough between the Aphelios and, of course, that hymning a two. Niddly Heimerdinger Aphelios yeah, with the right okay. items at the right times, with the right guns, of course, because mm. we are talking Aphelios here, can do some uh, fairly scary things. Arya gets hit by the Graviton. Bind Eclipse doesn't come out, but it does force a teleport. It's That'll a be... very timely teleport, though. I did really like that response from CGA. In another scenario, that would have just lend ended up to Ari going down for his first death. He is looking at the rest of his team going like, guys, why are we 3 and 11? Because he's been 100% kill participation right oh, now. It does take a solo fight of the face. He does take a Zenith blade as well. Flashes over the wall, but will survive. That will be the flash down for the Syndra, <laughs> though, and she's even more immobile now. The thing about this Syndra and what Ari's trying to do, he's just trying to find any way to get some extra gold. Try and get to a wave, even though it's risky, trying to burn some of these aggressive tools from DFM. Now, in this time where the Solar Flare is down, where the Utapon, uh, with, so the FLS, I mean, it is Utapon, I guess, of Moonlight Vigil is down, can CGA take a fight because these ultimates are not available from DFM? DFM have a 7k gold advantage right now, but... We've, all, we've seen them throw that. We have. Game four we have. versus Bernie Core. They were up a similar amount and managed to throw it. I think with the way I, this comp is set up, it'll be a little harder for them to do I, so. But if one person steps out wrong against the Syndra, they get deleted because you do have that follow well, down. The well, this is the thing, right? It's, it's all of them together. It's, it's the Syndra with the Void Staff second. Really important because the amount of resist built up onto you. Harmoninger onto you. Of course, the Stone Play and Seraph. Look off, at this. He does manage to get away, though. Slicing is a useful ability. Ah, uh, but Grendel uses the flash for that and doesn't even burn a flash from there because he didn't have it available. He just ends up slicing away, and you're right, the turrets come out of Heimenninger. This is probably a dead Baron. Severum is on. The, the, the Baron is down to 3k HP. Unica will be around, but I think he's just too late. DFM get it, but now they need to work out whether they want this fight. Ebby's in the bush. He's taking a lot of damage. He takes a final spark as well and will fall, but DFM continuing to fight. Gang's in the back line, and he's taking a lot of damage. Utapon has slain Unica, though, and that's another Moonlight Vigil that lands in Tim Furnham. Nap! He's taken down to half HP. Grendel as well is taking so many shots to the face and he'll get a double will Utapon and get out. Gango is still alive. Seros went for the flash onto Grendel with the edge of the rockets. Can't quite find it. And that will be a two for one in favor of DFM, and they get the Baron at 23 minutes. So, CG don't even win the fight after the Baron goes down. This is looking very, very dire. We talked about how DFM might have, uh, may, might have wanted to be on the blue side instead of the red side, but the stats be damned. They are coming out very, very strong in this game. And it is Ocean Rift. DFM have two drakes. This would be Ocean Soul Point. They're down 130 gold because it was a shutdown that went over. Ebby had done very well in this game. But I'm sure they ought to pick it up fairly swiftly. Whisper, and now they're going to go towards this Ocean Drake and secure it with no contest because of how low the health bars were. Oh, and the items were just not there from CGA. You did say Utapon kind of goes in, gets the kill, gets out. It was very closely played, actually. <laughs> Nap gets the taunt onto him, and he escapes with less than 100 HP. Got, got very, very close because of that high um, AD build from Gango. Gone for the Essence Reaver first, going into the Infinity Edge. No, none of that. Blade of the Rune King nonsense. But it doesn't end up giving enough damage quite at this point to seal out a kill. Of course, as I say and recount this tale, we're going to see it back on screen. Uh, so, you know, I'm just making sure I'm covering all my bases. Indeed. <laughs> DFM have taken this down so quickly. They're trying to go for the steal with the collateral damage. It just doesn't come through. Ebby, we said that he didn't have flash beforehand. Final Spark comes out, and he doesn't get to use his advantage Poor in at this point. Gang goes in really, really deep. The thing is, it doesn't really do much at this point. It just kind of... CJ have already committed to the fight. It doesn't lock up anyone in advance, but it does mean that some of these escape tools, some of the mobility tools, tools are not available to CGA to keep walking forwards into them. Utapon now in the top lane, in for the siege. Grendel trying to poke out across this base gate, trying to offer time. You can see Seros in the mid lane will take down the mid tier 2 while that's going on, and now the 4-1 can commence proper. They're both onto these inhibitor turrets in the mid and top lane cga can they even look to defend every stepping forwards and that top lane just gone they don't even feel like they can step up and defend that i don't think they can utapon has the caliber of extra range full ammo nonetheless as well firing out the cues has the extra damage you see how much gango gango that's one q auto if he stacks around for another ultimate from the moonlight vigil things get very very dicey 
Tries an Aria though, maybe he can find a stun. Does not quite land that scout of the week. Fairly close. You see, Gang um, went looking for his own little Zenith blade there. They wanted to see if they could end it here. They've got themselves into the base. They're going to get themselves onto the inhibitors now as well. Both fall on this Baron Bush, but now the final spark comes out. It does something, but not a lot. And Grendel, goodbye, sweet prince. You are but a spark of light in the wind. You need to get some damage down, but it's onto this crocodile who has a lot of HP to burn. You can see what happens with CJ. I've got this such low range composition. They try and find anything, but they don't have the follow up. DFM just snap the jaws shut, pushing him for the base. Nexus turrets under siege one has already fallen. Nap now stepping forwards and DFM realizing they don't really have a wave will pull out and they're going to escape having broken the base in many many places I'm done and I mean really teleport. oh teleport coming in this is really bold all right they can see that gang hasn't left and they can see Arya there it's still going to be a two versus one I'm not sure Arya wants this he gets a stun onto the crocodile but now he's burned his CC and they won't find what they're looking for they don't, they didn't have the Shen ult either, Nap did have teleport, because remember, this is Ocean Soul Point. We do have three dragons over to DFM, I believe it did say Dragon was alive there in the top left hand corner, I'm pretty sure that's not the case looking no, at the minimap. it's not. Maybe Arya was confused by that, it's like, okay, wow, well, dra dragon's, dragon's, dragon's alive, alive. I, must, I must fight for this. And, I mean, poor Arya, right? He's 2-0-2, 100% kill participation, still has an individual lead over his opponent when there's an 11,000 gold lead. He's really been trying, but the rest of the map has just fallen apart for CGA. We haven't really had much chance talking about itemization, but you can see it in the top lane especially. It's three items to one and a half. It's pretty monument, it's pretty explosive, and, and, and in the jungle yeah. as well. And the thing about Nap on something like Orn, which was removed from them by DFM, uh, that was banned in the second round of bans, is that the Call of the Forge God is always relevant. Regardless of the items you have, you don't have to commit to it, and it allows you to set up for something like the Scout of the Week and the Light Binding in itself, right? We've talked about that a number of times. The, the global almost worked in that bot lane fight, and it turned into a 1 for 4, and it ended up being really, really awkward for CGA. DFM have just had CGA's number this game. They've ended up playing around the correct areas of the map, using the strengths of their composition, and CGA have not managed to bring theirs to bear. Yeah, now have DFM put them into positions where put themselves in positions where they've had to outplay? Yeah, a little bit. Utapon <laughs> on that bot side. Then again, it was a pretty good use of the flash. Then it was a good outplay in some ways, but there is also that world where, actually, if Utapon flashes just that half second late, <laughs> Everything changes very quickly. Though. Oh, Unica flashes slightly early. Right, Ebby going to find in trouble. Speaking of everything changing really fast, Ebby takes all of the abilities. Just still at half HP Death now, stands. running away, flashing out. Gango finally gets it, but CGA had to burn absolutely everything to get him. They finally do, but it will okay. be at the cost of their final inhibitor. Okay, so Ebby is down 40 seconds. He does have a teleport, but can CGA find a timing window to find a fight in this 4v5? They still have the scatter the wheat, not scatter the wheat, the unleashed power from the center, importantly. That ultimate might be able to zero out the next target, but CGA are going very deep for this, and they've lost vision control. It'll be Ocean Soul up very shortly. You can see Arya getting corralled. He's got a flash, has to use it. Uses the unleashed power to Unipon and heals it straight back up. Now this Syndra is in a difficult position. Unica onto the Ocean Drake. DFM want to contest, want to look for the fight even, because they can win. They're just teleporting in. That's high and there's one turret remaining. CGA, you might have just seeded the game because you can't get back. They're having a teleport back in response, and now Steel in the back of the pit will look and secure it. Yeah. He does! It's Ocean Soul, and now the Solar Flare is down on a Unica who has to flash out Shen, Shen ulting straight back out of the base he teleported into. Oh, and he is here! And the Crocodile snaps in jaws he's in the river and what do you know it's looking like florida down here and speaking of florida man aria up a creek with no paddle welcome to the other side of the world aria he takes a rocket to the face and dfm with three dead with ocean soul with minions on the remaining nexus story they're gonna push in and try and end it and i know that we've had our uh, of comments about dfm Woo! the split whoa that is a kill into hymening a gango is still fighting he's gonna try still taking pretty low but that will finally be a zenith blade on as well and gango goes down as well 18 to 6 29 minutes on the clock dfm are on to the nexus and and they'll claim victory in game one of this best of five. Nexus falls and DFM have the advantage in game one, a game which is so important for the mentality of a series in a best of five. However, talking about mentality, we're going to have to go recover our mental, go get our minds together for some thoughts for the post game analysis desk. Join us soon.
Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial desk bringing you coverage of the LJL 2020 summer split playoffs round two game two match one Already left and done match two is what we're on and we're on game one in the books Donation focused me with a decisive victory over crest gaming and gentlemen let's begin in that pick and ban phase and this wasn't anything new from DFM now, was it? Renekton Nidalee, Heimerdinger, uh, a fairly off spot, and uh, gangs all too good, Leona. Sounds mm. like a dream comp for DFM, a lot of comfort there. Yeah, I mean, for sure. go for it, go for it, Nightmare. No, 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 I, was, uh, I think that the Renekton Nidalee is something that... The thing is, DFM, this split, we've almost criticized them for going top too much. You can never go top too much with the Renekton Nidalee. And they end up getting so much pressure there and Ebby gets so far ahead. That pressure spreads just exponentially across the map. We have a Heimerdinger who's very safe because you know that Unica is losing half of his jungle because that topside jungle now belongs to Nidalee too. That means that Unica gets behind. I don't think that CJ played particularly respectfully around a lot of this stuff, but it was still in the game plan for DFM. It was just the best case scenario for them. I mean... DFM ended up having Ebby proxy farming uh, Nap a yep. lot of this game, and whenever Nap tried to recover some of that, he didn't have backup, and half the time Steel was actually waiting for him to play a little bit back to Ebby, and we saw it not work out. However, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself because something went on down in the bot lane. CGA tried for a three-man engage, and initialized. I don't think it worked out very well for them. No, it didn't. Renekton Italy is one thing on the top side of the mat. Lucian with Lux and Graves looking to push in on the bot side is another. Mm. Lucian ends up, they go for the level three versus level two dive on the bot side. Graves turns up. It's all looking pretty good for CGA. Then Gango takes aggro and Gang pounces with to keep sort of the Lucian under turret mm. with the Ignite on, with the Zenith Blade mm. and the Shield of Daybreak. I believe someone took aggro then stepped yeah, so, out so, first, yeah, which looked problematic, Lux but he had to go down first blood. Yeah, yeah. Lux, Lux stepped, stepped in, in, and I think Grendel was meant to be... No, not Grendel. Uh, Unica was meant to tank it after, but they missed that up because Lucian died forward at the same time the Graves dashed <laughs> forward, and... It was a yeah. bit of a mess. <laughs> it was. I think that Grendel could have taken an extra... Well, he could have taken two shots oh, without... Yeah. Uh, two, he could have taken an extra shot and not died. It would have meant that Gango would have gone on to Lux to try and lock them up under tower. Mm -hmm. What that does mean, though, is I think you're okay trading one for one with the Ophelios dying and the Lux dying. Because yeah. then, as we saw after that point, right, the Ophelios lost, like, a good 15, 20 CS. It's really good. Lane dominance for the um, mm. for at least the CS lead, right? But if you've already died for first blood in that duo, something has gone horribly wrong for your game plan. Yeah, and it only went like that throughout the rest of the game. Let's highlight, though, the mid lane. Siros had a pretty reasonable game on his Heimerdinger. Arya couldn't do too much because he needed to be everywhere and farming his lane at all times. And the Syndra wasn't bad. Wasn't a bad pick. What could he no. have done, really, Nymera? He literally did everything he could. He was 100% kill participation. He only died at the very last point. He went like 2 0 2. He had a couple of kill combos, right, where someone was locked up. Mm. He ended up getting that t that team up kill with Grendel onto Heimerdinger in the mid lane. Mm. This Syndra is doing everything that they could. You just don't expect yourself to lose this hard in vision, this hard in your individual lane matchups, and be the only person who really does have threat onto the enemy team. Yeah. Maybe with something like an Azir or whatever, you might have a bit more team fight potential. But I still don't think this game rests on Arya's head. What I will say though is, like, not necessarily to criticize Arya, but perhaps to praise Soros, Seros a little mm. bit here. We saw the Syndra play for lane, got that 20 CS up, but Seros was kind of willing to do what we saw from V3 uh, yes, yesterday, yeah. where it's like, okay, I just just yeah. sack this wave and teleport to be there for the squad. Uh, it played out with the first bird. He turned up to try and help support. Was trying to look to turn things around. Well, he was already good. running up the... top to help with the dive yeah, onto exactly. Nap, and then was like, "Oh, they're coming on to us. Oh yes, I'll come back." <laughs> yeah, uh, and the other one was was the teleport down for the for the uh, four to one yeah. round the, mm. the dragon fight where they try, where CJ tried to catch out Udipon, probably the other one, which was a pretty big one where Saros was just there faster. Yeah, I mean, let's actually highlight that 4-for-1. Four, four, you, We saw Udipon actually get caught out. It looked like he was going to be chunked in a split second and didn't quite get there. Nymera, how did that just kind of go down? 
So, um, Utapon steps up into the tri brush. He is isolated, mm. and therefore he takes two ultimates to the face and a load of those from Great Illusion. Very nearly goes down, importantly, doesn't. Unica then goes forward trying to do the. Well, it's not a submarine, more like, I guess, a speedboat, I guess. Shenol on top of the graves, sure. running forward with the phase rush. Well, no, it didn't have phase rush, had the uh, fleet footwork, of course, this game. Um, and then Unica flashes forward a split second after Shen has already arrived to try and finish off the Aphelios. Mm. The Shen, therefore, can't land the taunt onto. Yeah, uh, the Aphelios, the AD carry survives. They probably would have lost the fight anyway. It just adds extra salt in the wound. CJ are just not really on the same page. The mechanical play is not working out for them. Their damage calculation is also a bit off. DFM just punished them so hard. Again, praise for me goes to Gang, who was just over that yeah, wall, yeah, yeah. lands the mother of all Zenith Blades, gets a three-man solar flare after, which goes into the bouncing grenade from Saros. It's just like great chain CC and great responsive play from the side of DFM, turning up to defend their AD carry when things were looking a little dicey down there. Was looking dicey. Let's find out though, how our round, well, how round two, match two, game two for Crest Gaming Out versus Detonation Focus Me will go down. Will CGA be able to respond? Will DFM answer back in similar fashion? Let's find out, gentlemen, after this break.